Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. I'm an emeritus professor of clinical dentistry from UCLA and also have a private practice. And here we are today talking about the class two Reb style. And we're gonna utilize these RTX teeth which have built-in caries. In this particular tooth, the caries is on the mesial. Now the red is going to use something very similar to this, not exactly this tooth, but very, very similar. They're going to be utilizing a tooth called the Compodont, which is not available for purchase. It's only available for the testing agencies. These teeth are also made as uh, anterior caries teeth as well, so for class threes, like in this example, or maybe number 30 on the mesial, which we're showing you here. This one is used on the ADEX exam. And I've cut the preparation just quickly to show you where the caries would be located in this particular situation. But let's go ahead and get started on the maxillary isolation. And you're going to need to perform rubber dam isolation. And you can see how this number three clamp is extending beyond the second molar into the tissue on the palatal side. And what I'm going to do, instead of trying to look around for different clamps, is I'm just going to modify this clamp by removing that portion of the jaw. And you can see now that there's no impingement of the jaw in the soft tissue area. We have a custom-made clamp just for this particular situation. So, you know, for a composite, you can really make a preparation that does not have to go all the way up in here. I'm going to do both designs. You never want to cross the oblique ridge either, but you're going to want to have this preparation, remove the caries, maybe in a box form like this, or maybe in a sort of a C shape. And then you could extend it into the occlusal if you wanted to for maybe additional resistance and retention form. Although with a composite, that may not really be necessary. So let's take a look at the burr kits we're going to use. This is the ADEX burr kit, and this works great for all plastic teeth. Well, on the REB exam, you, if you're working on a patient, this is the kit you'd want to use. And we have both of these available at STS. We're going to start with a 330 diamond. And this is on the ADEX kit because ADEX is all about uh, these plastic teeth. And we're going to make a little punch cut in the marginal ridge area not in the central groove or the mesial groove at all. We're just going to go right into this area and leave a little shell. So we're going to protect the adjacent tooth as we work our way down towards gingival clearance. You notice that there's some caries located inside. You can kind of see the brown, but that shell is really critical to maintain. So let's just make this a little wider you know, facial lingually, and uh, be able to see a little bit more down into the hole. This would be my initial technique if this was on the Reb exam, just to make this small little shape and take a look and see what's going on. And you can visualize that darkness there that is telling you that we definitely have caries. Now let's pick up a bird that's like the 55 called the 555D. And this is three millimeters in length. As you can see, we're measuring it here. And you're going to want to go the entire length of this burr towards the gingival. I mean, we know that because that is usually the minimum amount you need to go to break contact properly on the acadental typodon. So just don't think about tipping this burr necessarily, you know, to try to create any convergence at this point. Just kind of focus on making the box a little bit wider facial lingually, a little bit deeper axially, and work your way down towards the gingival clearance area. You know, this undermining of the wall followed by chipping that lip away is such a great technique to gain clearance. Diamond burrs are far more effective compared to the carbide burrs when it comes to cutting through these RTX enamel type teeth. They'll cut very efficiently compared to a carbide. 
And that's why we have these on the bird block. These are called operative diamonds, and they're based off of the shape of the carbide. You can see that there's really no decay on the lingual side, but of course we need to break contact anyway. Most of the caries remaining is on the facial wall and of course on the axial wall. So we just continue uh, and make the preparation a little bit wider. And once again, you can see the caries clearly on the axial wall. And then you also see this little area on the DEJ, on the facial. And one of the ways you can get yourself in trouble on this exam is to miss decay at the DEJ. Performing our little Sturdivant chip by knocking out that little gingival area. And you can see how we're already gaining the lingual clearance at this point, and we're getting a lot of the gingival clearance as well. Now I'm using the enamel hatchet in the typical fashion by just placing it at the occlusal and pushing down with the bevel away from the wall and maintaining a good finger rest so that we don't inadvertently slip or damage the adjacent tooth. This is a little uh, tricky and it requires a lot of focus so that when we're chopping down like this, we're not uh, hitting that premolar nor are we undermining this facial wall, which as we know from other videos, is orthogonal relative to the gingival wall. And we're going to perform the same maneuver now on the lingual, and we're removing the little lip of undermined tooth structure. And you can see we've done a pretty good job of doing that. There's still some wiggles on that facial wall and lingual wall we need to remove, but we're much closer. Now with the 1169D, which is just like the 169L, except it's a diamond, we can now get a little bit further extension on the walls with a very small tip and not worry so much maybe about hitting the adjacent tooth. Notice that when we start to prepare and get the proper extension on the lingual side, we're going to tip the burr slightly towards the facial so that we get a little bit of a convergent angle on the lingual proximal wall relative to the gingival. And I'm just showing you from a different view here how we can keep the burr at the top part of the preparation and just use the tip, which is super narrow, to gain a little bit more clearance without hitting the adjacent tooth. Yes, we get very close, but with practice you can uh, do this in such a way that you don't hit the adjacent tooth. And we could always use some kind of interproximal protection device, like an interguard or one of the, the fender wedges, which can be really helpful in this respect. So now I think we have the kind of flare that we want to have for a composite. This is not an amalgam prep, this is a composite. And uh, we're now really at the point where we can just remove little bits of remaining undermined enamel. And I think at this point we're ready to delve into the caries removal process. Let's take a look at where the decay is located pretty much underneath uh, the enamel there and a little bit here on the facial. And then when I push the Explorer, I get tug back. That's one of the most amazing things about these teeth is that when you push the Sharp Explorer into a suspected area and it penetrates into the dentin and then has resistance to pulling it back out, uh, it's, these are magical teeth. They're truly incredible. And now we're going to use the 330 diamond to unroof this area because if we just went in with a round burr at this point we'd be undermining all of that enamel and this enamel is really com coming up underneath the look at that it's really undermining all that enamel so making a little shape like a C shape like this is really appropriate and so let's just continue with a little bit more of this kind of concave look so that we isolate the caries to uh, just completely an axial wall that is in dentin and we're not going to be undermining any enamel when we go to, to remove this with our slow speed. We're going to utilize a four round burr today in a slow speed and this is a friction grip slow speed and it is removing the caries very easily. We worked kind of peripherally and then down into the middle. 
Now the key here is don't assume you're done when you see no more stain. You have to very carefully go over the entire periphery and make sure you have no tug back. You don't leave anything behind that could be soft. This is where people have run into trouble on the REB exam. They get it, or actually on the ADEX, because the REB is yet to use these teeth. They're going to use them uh, starting in 2021, so uh, be ready. But on the ADEX exam, people had trouble with uh, this aspect because they got the stain out, but they didn't realize that this tooth is so sophisticated that areas are going to be carious and soft, even when they look non-carious. So we can see that we have more than half a millimeter of clearance of the gingival and about 0.4 on the lingual and facial. And then axial depth is, is pretty extensive. We're about two millimeters deep, but because we don't need to uh, have a base here for this composite, we could actually just perform the composite restoration at this point and, and you'd be fine. If you are inclined to include the occlusal, perhaps the decay is more extensive in your tooth because every tooth could be different too. Uh, you're going to need to, you know, go to 1.5 millimeters deep and extend perhaps into a kind of a traditional dovetail shape. So I just wanted to show this variation should you need to extend because of caries or because you're just fearful that you don't have enough resistance and retention form. Even with composite, it is important to make sure that you have some mechanical lock in a posterior tooth because of the amount of forces that are placed on that composite. And that lock could be convergent walls and it also could be a dovetail and occlusal extension. So this is a 330 RGS, which is a burr that is just designed to make outline forms smooth without appreciably deepening the pulpal while you're doing so. And it works really, really well. It's, it's got to be one of my favorite burrs for finishing good conservative composite and amalgam preparations. And really, this is just about it. You can go with a gingival margin trimmer. This is a mesial GMT and make sure that we've removed all the loose enamel rods and perhaps even place a little bevel down at the gingival uh, wall and start with the instrument in the middle and work towards the lingual and same thing on the facial. You can also, you know, kind of run this instrument up occlusally and remove any little potential undermine enamel rods in that area. Start in the middle and rotate over towards the facial and then don't forget, the axopulpal should be beveled. Even though the axopulpal is significantly deep in this area because of the caries removal, uh, we need to make sure that that is nice and rounded. If for some reason you have any adjacent tooth damage, oh, you can see the clearance there. It looks nice and uniform. And let's rotate this to the other side, towards the, the lingual side, and take a look at that. And um, I think that we're going to see that it should be pretty clear. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so you can see it's pretty uniform. You can always look from the outside in and see how your walls are, if there's any irregularities. And if you do have any adjacent tooth damage, you really got to get in there with a disc and smooth it and make sure that there's no damage whatsoever and it's polished nicely. You can use some kind of, kind of an emergency adjacent tooth repair system. You can make one of your own. Um, you can find these on the internet. Uh, you can check out our site. Well, I think we have uh, some pretty good uh, systems to, to correct adjacent tooth damage. But basically this is it. And at this point, uh, you get permission to, uh, to restore the tooth and you go on to the next step, which I would love to show you in a subsequent video. And this is the RTX number 14 MO, which will be used on the Reb exam in 2021. So Let's get ready for this. In the meantime, y'all take care. Thanks for watching.